Hello, welcome to the 13th episode of Gospel Open Data Science. I'm your host, Mark G. Bilby. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of a database, a DuckDB database that I've put together for the Glaux project. Um, I'm not affiliated with the Glaux project, just using their uh, publicly released XML data, which is one of the largest corpora in the world for classical Greek. Um, really the, the best and most richly annotated corpus of classical Greek uh, that's now available as of a release just a couple months ago. Uh, Glaux means owl in Greek, and the corpus uh, comes out of KU Leuven, the Catholic University of Leuven. It has over 1,400 texts and uh, over 20 million tokens. Um, so in the world of classical Greek, this is a big deal. It's almost as if uh, the DNA or RNA or whatever you want to say of uh, the Greek language has now been publicly made available open access. So there are still great projects like the TLG out there, the, the source Lingo Greca that are available to query Greek, but now we have really massive open access corpora that are available that allow for really amazing and uh, quick research if we uh, use the tools that are available to us today. So let's get on with the, the demonstration. Um, so the particular use case that I'm addressing here is from an email that Marcus Vincent sent me um, earlier today. Uh, he's going through the English translation of the Apostolos that I did based on his Greek reconstruction, and he's evaluating some of the reconstruction decisions. So in uh, Apostolos Galatians 1.8, he noted that the word anathema may have uh, a, a non-negative sense. It may have a, a neutral sense um, of just being like dip something devoted to God or dedicated to God or offered up to God. And if you look through Greek lexicons or lexica, you see um, that range of meanings. So what I wanted to do is do a little more digging and see how the term had been used and in what context and by which authors. And the TLG, again, great resource for this, especially for a Christian text. But um, you know, it's a subscription to the TLG usually is either expensive for individuals or uh, it requires an institutional subscription and not everybody is affiliated with an institution. So I wanted to use the open access resources that are now available. Um, and that includes the Glaux corpus that I was just introducing. So if you haven't seen that and you're a computational linguistics person or even a lay person who's just interested in getting more serious in your study of Greek and your use of Greek um, resources out there, uh, the Glaux corpus is a great place to start. So what I did, it, it took you know a couple of weeks of work um, and I put this together probably like five or six weeks ago. And it's something that our team um, has available. So Lance Lotharp and I are using this in our research and we have other scholars on our team as well. And um, if there are others out there who would like to join our team, collaborate in some capacity, make use of some of these resources that we're building and using behind the scenes, most of this research we do uh, without making it publicly visible. But uh, there's a lot of uh, linguistic work, queries, resource building that goes on behind the scenes. So let me just do a quick uh, read of this database that I put together. Uh, two, two basic uh, tables for the database. There's a document table, which basically just pulls from uh, the metadata file um, of the Glaux corpus, and it corresponds roughly to, to this. Uh, so the Glaux with it come a really nice uh, tab-separated value uh, metadata.txt file that gives a description of uh, you know, authors, titles, genres, uh, licenses. This is why I can't distribute the database publicly because some of the texts that are part of this are licensed in such a way that it wouldn't allow for derivatives necessarily um, to be produced. Date limits, I think this is really fascinating. Uh, Dior's is, has specific dates. Glaux provides more like date ranges, but both are highly useful if we want to start to like chronologically uh, locate text within history. The ranges, as you can see, for New Testament texts are pretty broad, 1 AD to 100 AD. I would have all kinds of problems with that range uh, for a variety of reasons, but at least it gives us some some beginning points, and the texts themselves are, are highly, highly valuable. So um, you know, this, for instance, is the one for Galatians. Uh, it's you know, really richly tagged with the word, uh, verse, the lemma, 
morphological tag following the Morpheus uh, part of speech and morphology tags, the head word, so what word it's connected to, and then the relationship that the word has. Uh, so all this is really rich information that can reveal deep underlying like structural patterns in uh, linguistic style and help with tasks like authorship identification and disambiguation and text dating and these kinds of things. But you see the word anathema here. Uh, this is the word that I'm wanting to query. So when I, uh, so this, this is just an overview of the document uh, that basically pulling from the metadata table. And then this is parsed where it takes, again, reading from those XML files, um, but then I'm also develop using um, uh, code that Bob Gorman was kind enough to share for me. Uh, Robert and Vanessa Gorman teach at University of Nebraska Lincoln and they're specialists in the analysis of Greek syntactical patterns, uh, particularly for tasks of authorship, identification, and disambiguation. So Bob, Bob Gorman was kind enough to share some of his R code with me, and I've used that in building out this database. So it not only has the Glaux fields, but another about 1,300 columns of um, highly uh, like granular data, one-hot encoded data corresponding to all kinds of uh, features that uh, we can detect within these texts to look for meaningful, statistically meaningful and significant patterns um, to tell, tell apart authors and texts and so on. So um, that's that, and uh, let me let me go ahead and run a query here, so you can see. Just the, this is very basic. I'm only using a little bit of the potential of this database resource in this query, but I just wanted you to see how it would work for this particular task that Marcus, um, this word that Marcus has pointed us to. So if we wanted to get a little more context on the word anathema, does it mean cursed, accursed? dedicated, devoted, right? How should we translate this in Mar the Marcionite Apostolos and in the co corresponding canonical text? While well, running a word query, a lemma query in this case, we're searching for the lemma, um, can maybe give us some insights into that. So it takes a, it's taking a little while here, but we should see some results pretty soon. Oh, the resource, it's up to 10 gigabytes of memory. I hope it doesn't crash on me. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah, these are the results. So the results are in now. Uh, we have 21 results within the, the Glaucus corpus of the lemma anathema. Uh, we can already just with a quick glance here and up, these basically combine the two tables. So we have the word table with all the word information and we have the document table with information about the name of the text, the author, the dates and all that. So I've combined, basically done a join here so we can see these results together. And just looking very quickly at this, we can already see that there's a clear pattern for this word to occur in Hellenistic Jewish contexts. We'd have to dig a little deeper to then go into each sequence here. This is kind of like a keywords in context. It gives us the, the preceding three words and then the following three words. So we can get a sense of what the word means in its context. Um, but we have to look a little deeper to see what the what the sense is, whether it's a positive or a negative sense to this. But this is quite powerful, quite quick, um, and the, this is really only scratching the surface of the potential of the of the Glaux DuckDB that I put together. Again, I can't uh, publicly release it or like make it available to download, but it is something that I can share within our research team, not for public use. Um, but for simply for research use um, by people on our team. So if you are interested, if you're a scholar interested in Greek computational linguistics or getting much more deep into um, the study of these texts and uh, the ability to use computational resources and approaches, data science to an analyze these texts, uh, please get in touch with me or Marcus or Jack Bull and um, we'll see if we can find a, a spot for you on our team. All right, thanks for your, your time and interest.